There's no feeling quite like unboxing a brand new phone, and if you've picked up a shiny new OnePlus 10 Pro recently, you'll already know there's a lot to get to grips with on this device. Which is why we've rounded up the top 10 things you need to do with your brand new OnePlus 10 Pro. Take a sec to subscribe to Android Central for more OnePlus coverage in future, and we'll jump in. Like any other Android phone, the OnePlus 10 Pro has a bunch of different customization options for you to choose from, helping you match the look and feel of your phone to your own personal style. As far as wallpapers go on this or any other OnePlus phone, there are of course plenty built in, but one app you'll definitely want to check out is Abstract from Hampus Olsen. He's the artist responsible for most of the stock wallpapers from OnePlus phones, so there's a bunch here that look really great on the 10 Pro. And you'll notice that certain apps from Google will also theme themselves based on the colours of your wallpaper as part of Android 12's Material U design language. Unlike some Android 12 phones though, the 10 Pro doesn't theme its entire interface based on your wallpaper, so you'll need to choose an accent colour here under the personalization menu if you want everything to match up. Most of the theming options here are built around the personalization menu. This is where you'll find things like icon customization for both app icons and quick settings. You can change the shape, style, and size of these, as well as a bunch of customization options for the always on display. So OnePlus's always on display is really fully featured. You can choose to have it always display, show only between certain hours, or to show it for just a few minutes when you put your phone down, which is a nice way to extend battery life. You've got the usual clock options in all their various forms, as well as some more exotic options. Insight lets you see a visual representation of your day's phone usage so far, highlighting how many times you've unlocked and also your screen on time. Next there's Canvas, which can generate a pattern based on the outline of one of your photos to use with the always on display. Works best with portraits or selfies, but other photos can be fun to try as well. And yes, you can even have your own Bitmoji floating on there as well if you're into having your own digital avatar following you throughout the day. There are a whole bunch of different ways to make your phone more personal to you, whether it's on the lock screen, the AOD, or more obvious things like your home screen. The OnePlus widget shelf is back in Oxygen OS 12 and enabled by default. It's kind of an alternative place to stack your home screen widgets vertically, while also having some unique functionality of its own. And by default, there are a bunch of widgets here for common apps, along with weather, step count, and data usage, as well as Spotify streaming. But the biggest addition in this version of Oxygen OS is Scout Search, an enhanced search system that can also show you basic stuff from the content on your device. Alternatively, if you just want to stick to widgets on your home screen, you can disable the shelf under special features in the settings app, and swiping down will just show you the notification shade as normal. And if you want to use Scout Search without using the shelf, you can still do that by adding the dedicated Scout Search bar onto your home screen. The OnePlus 10 Pro's display looks great out of the box, but there are a few settings you'll want to take a look at when you're getting to grips with this phone. The first one that can make the display look better in a wide range of lighting conditions is Nature Tone Display. Kind of like Apple's True Tone Display, it uses the cameras to determine the temperature of the light around you and uses that to tune the colour of the display, so colours look more natural whatever environment you happen to be in. For example, cooler colours out in bright sunlight or warmer under an incandescent light indoors. There's also a useful setting here to tune the display's colours to the characteristics of your own vision. Basically, for people who might be colourblind, you can arrange these colours by hue and the phone will use that to tweak the colour reproduction to better match your vision. If you prefer a more subdued look later in the day, you might also want to set up a schedule for dark mode. You can tie your dark mode settings to the sunrise or sunset time or your own custom times. And you can also set up a schedule for eye comfort mode, which reduces the blue light output of the panel, supposedly making for easier viewing later in the day. There are a whole bunch of different gesture controls in any modern OnePlus phone besides the Android navigation gestures that we all know about, which by the way you can still disable and switch back to plain old software keys if you prefer. But while we're talking about navigation, there are a few other neat options to take a look at. You can remove the visible gesture bar at the bottom of the screen to totally maximise the area of your screen dedicated to apps and content, and you can also activate an optional swipe and hold gesture from the horizontal bezels to quickly hop between the previous two apps. There's a handy screenshot gesture too, which in certain situations could be easier to activate than the usual power plus volume combo. With this enabled, a three finger swipe is all you need to capture a screenshot, then share or expand it out into a scroll shot. Raised to Wake is pretty useful too on this phone, especially if you've got face unlock set up. You'll find it under the home and lock screen settings, and it just means that whenever you pick up your phone, it's already awake and looking for your face. 
At the same time, you can set up Oxygen OS to lock the screen with a double tap, just the same as the double tap to wake feature that's part of many companies' Android firmware. It's often easier than reaching for the physical power button. And speaking of that physical power button, by default it's set up to open the Google Assistant with a long press, which is useful unless you want to use it to see the device controls and your credit cards through Google Pay. The power button option under system settings lets you change that and also disable the double tap camera shortcut if that's not your style. The latest version of Oxygen OS has also inherited one of my favourite features from Oppo phones, the Quick Launch Shortcut menu. This is found under Special Features and lets you choose a semicircle of 5 apps that then appear in this carousel if you long press the fingerprint scanner while unlocking. You can use it for anything, but I found it's really useful for messaging apps, payment apps or smart home controls. And if you have a lot of app icons on your home screen, you might want to try this icon pull down gesture. Swipe up the left or right edge of your screen and the icons will collapse down into the lower portion of the display where they're easier to tap. Oxygen OS 12 includes a new RAM expansion feature which augments the 8GB of base RAM in the OnePlus 10 Pro with up to an additional 5GB of memory taken from the phone's internal storage. This isn't quite the same as adding another 5 gigs of real high-speed RAM, but kind of like the page file on a Windows PC, it can help apps to avoid being bumped out of memory. So unless you're running super low on storage space, we'd recommend turning this feature on. At the same time, the locked apps feature can help you avoid important apps being dumped out of memory. You can lock apps right from the recent apps menu, or find the list of all locked apps in the home screen settings panel. So if there's an important messaging or social app that you want to keep at your fingertips at all times, this will make sure it's never killed off in the background. And for certain messaging apps, if you've got multiple accounts, you might want to take a look at creating clone versions of them. Basically a second independent instance of that app that you can then sign into with your second account. It could be really useful if you're managing a secondary social account, or if you're using the OnePlus 10 Pro in dual SIM mode and you want to use an app like WhatsApp for both numbers. A couple of years back, OnePlus added some comprehensive app and content privacy features, and these are back in the latest version of Oxygen OS. By setting up enhanced privacy mode with its own passcode, you can either hide certain apps altogether, removing them from the app drawer and requiring you to go into the dialer and enter your secret access code to see them, or you can allow access to them with your six-digit privacy code. It's a great extra layer or two of security that means if you hand someone your phone, you're not necessarily giving them all the keys to your digital life. And the same extra security can apply to photos, audio or documents in the private safe area. You can keep sensitive stuff here protected by a passcode, face or fingerprint unlock, and it won't be accessible outside of this area. Work-life balance is new in Oxygen OS 12, and if you really want to keep your work and home life separate, this feature is worth checking out. You can set your phone to identify when you're at home or at work based on the time of day, the Wi-Fi network or location. You can also toggle work or life mode from the shortcuts under quick settings. From the work life menu you can set about telling your phone which Google accounts are personal and which are professional, and which apps you want to allow notifications from in work mode or life mode. It is a bit of a blunt instrument, but if you want to completely silo off work based distractions when you're off the clock, or stop social distractions from affecting your productivity, this one's definitely worth a look. There are countless features to play with in the Hasselblad-inspired OnePlus camera app, including the neat X-Pan panorama mode and the cool 150-degree fisheye mode. But there's one feature for selfies in particular that I've found really useful, and it's actually not enabled by default. The option to show your palm to shoot a selfie is super useful, and means you don't have to contort your hand to reach the shutter key if you're taking a wider shot. And there's also an option to tap anywhere in the viewfinder to do basically the same thing. As for other camera settings, HEIF and HEVC modes are also worth investigating because they could potentially save quite a bit of storage space on your device. These are newer compressed photo and video formats that don't work with as many apps or services but will produce smaller files. Generally, HEIF won't be too much of a problem. It's been the default on the iPhone for quite some time, so plenty of modern services support it. HEVC though, the video format, might give you a few more problems, especially if you're editing older apps. However, the OnePlus Photos app does have an easy way to export from these formats if you're sharing with an app that doesn't support them. That's it for now. If you've picked up a OnePlus 10 Pro recently, let us know how you're getting on with it and share your own tips down in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.